I need to figure out exactly who I am. These hands were once used for battle, now they're but humble tools for peace. I need to figure out exactly who I am. The first teaser for 4, Love and Thunder from Marvel Studios has arrived, offering the long-awaited hint of what's in store for the God of Thunder. The film finds Thor played by Chris Hemsworth, on a journey unlike anything he has ever faced, a quest for inner peace. But his retirement is interrupted by a galaxy assassin known as Gore the God Butcher by Christian Bale, who seeks the extinction of the gods. To combat the threat, Thor enlists the help of King Valkyrie played by Tessa Thompson, court by Taika Waititi, and ex-girlfriend Jane Foster Ole Natalie Portman, who, to Thor's surprise, mysteriously wield his magic hammer, Mjolnir, as the mighty Thor. Together, they embark on a terrifying cosmic adventure to unravel the mystery of the Butcher God's vengeance and stop it before it's too late. Check out the new teaser above, in addition to the poster for the upcoming cosmic adventure below. Born 1500 years ago to Odin and Frigga, the king and queen of fabled Asgard, Thor grew into a mighty warrior and protector of his home and people. Thought to be rash and even reckless by his father, Thor nevertheless looked forward to the day of his ascension to the throne. But, his adoptive brother Loki schemed in private to ensure that day never arrived. He manipulated Thor into attacking the Frost Giants, legendary adversaries of the Asgardians and Loki's people, and Odin, hoping to teach his son humility, divested Thor of his magic hammer Mjolnir and banished him to Midgard, the realm also known as Earth. Alone and unable to return to Asgard, Thor met scientists Jane Foster and Eric Selvig in the midst of their investigation into strange activity near a small New Mexico town. While his brother struggled with the limitations of mortals on Earth, Loki worked to ensure his own seizure of the Asgardian throne and planned to allow the Frost Giant King, his real father, into Asgard to slay Odin in his sleep. Back on Earth, Thor sacrificed himself to save the town from destruction and in doing so, impressed Odin enough to restore him to full Asgardian power. With Mjolnir once again in his grasp and the admiration and possible love of Jane Foster, Thor returned to his home, routed the Frost Giants, and defeated Lokagreen at his loss and stinging from Odin's condemnation. Loki chose to fall away from Asgard into a strange warp in space while Thor and their father looked on. Though happy to be back in Asgard, Thor's thoughts were filled with adventure on Midgard with Jane Foster. The trappings of a god. Like all Asgardians, Thor possesses great strength, endurance, stamina, and long life, but it is his command over the stormy forces of nature that separate him from his brethren as a true son of Odin the Allfather. Thor can call down lightning and thunder at will and utilize them like a blacksmith uses his tools to work iron and steel, bending and shaping them into weapons. Once he believed it was his hammer Mjolnir that granted him these powers, but in truth the ability has rested within him the whole time. For nearly a thousand years Thor holds Mjolnir's grip in battle, a true companion if ever there was one. The incredible hammer was forged by Odin from the heart of a dying star and gifted to his son for his exclusive use. Odin even places an enchantment on it when he banishes Thor to Midgard, one that would only allow a worthy person to lift it and possess the power of the God of Thunder. While Thor is with the Avengers on Earth, his comrades all try to handle the hammer, but only Captain America could move it slightly, a feat that its owner takes notice of. After Mjolnir's destruction by Hela, Thor forges a new weapon when the threat of Thanos arises. With the help of Yitri, a dwarven smithy of Nidavellir, and an adolescent group, Thor crafts Stormbreaker, an immense axe with some of the same properties as his hammer, along with the ability to open the Bifrost. The Dark Half Thor develops a number of adversaries in his quest to protect Asgard, and also Midgard, from harm. 
The relationship between Thor and Loki may rightfully be categorized as complicated. Raised as brothers, the two men know each other better than anyone, yet have been continually at odds, sometimes to notably extreme degrees. Loki's scheming nature and unbridled egoism comes between him and Thor many times over, causing trouble that has literally impacted entire worlds. Still Thor, overcoming multiple betrayals, believes the man he calls brother can change and embrace the light. And it seems Thor's belief in his is redeemed when Loki gives his life to protect Thor from Thanos, leaving Thor to deeply mourn his brother's loss. Among Thor's more clear-cut enemies stand Frost Giant King Lofi, Searcher the Fire Giant, the Dark Elf Malekith, and Thor's own half-sister Hela, the so-called Goddess of Death, all of whom have ill intent towards Asgard. Thor also finds himself imprisoned for a time on Sakaar by the Grand Master. Thanos earns Thor's immense hatred after the Tyrant's Crusade wipes out many Asgardians and kills loved ones of the God of Thunder, making things very personal for him. Warriors all Thor grows up surrounded by warriors and fighters, and it is among that august group that he can count the majority of his close companions. Heimdall, all-seeing keeper of the Bifrost Bridge, offers Thor advice and counsel whenever he requests it, and many times when he does not. Thor treasures his friendship with Heimdall, and they often fight back to back against those who threaten their home. Likewise, both Sif and the warriors treat Volstag, Fandral, and Hogan are valued comrades of Thor, battling at his side over the years. They take pride in the fact that they always had each other's backs in a fight, until the warriors three perished during Hela's siege on Asgard. On Earth, Jane Foster is a warrior in her own right, a woman who stands up for what she believes in and never backs down no matter how big a challenge she faces. These traits impress Thor from the moment he meets the young scientist, and their admiration for each other quickly grows into love. Whenever Thor is away from Earth, he counts the minutes until he returns to Jane Foster's side. Unfortunately, the two part ways eventually. The Asgardian also feels a bond with Dr. Eric Selvig, Foster's partner, and he looks to the scientist many times for insight not only into deep matters, but also for his knowledge of the world. Of all of Thor's Avengers teammates, Steve Rogers, Captain America, is perhaps the one that he trusts most with his life, though he will always remain a faithful companion to the others, including Tony Stark and Bruce Banner. The latter, in fact, more recently becomes a closer friend to Thor, as Banner's alter ego the Hulk battles Thor in the gladiatorial arena on Sakaar and fights beside him in Asgard. Thor also makes the acquaintance of one of the fabled Valkyrie on Sakaar, a warrior woman self-exiled from Asgard and her duties as one of its protectors. Though she at first opposes everything Thor stands for, she comes around to his desire to return to Asgard and vanquish its conqueror, Hela. In doing so, she becomes yet another staunch ally of the Thunder Gods, as does the Cronin named Kor, who also fights with Thor on both Sakaar and Asgard. While Thor encounters all of the Guardians of the Galaxy, he forges a special bond with Rocket, who accompanies him on his journey to create Stormbreaker in order to battle Thanos. Groot, who also joined that mission, becomes an ally as well. Gore the God Butcher A creature of deadly reckoning. Gore the God Butcher vows to kill all deities across the cosmos, a crusade that spans a millennia. Vowing to slay all the gods, Gore the God Butcher follows through with his promise thanks to his bond with the All Black, the first symbiote in most ancient evil. The non-believer raised by his mother and father on a planet without a name, young Gore learns of the gods who they must pay homage to in order to keep the family safe. Gore, possessing a crippled leg and an inquisitive demeanor, questions his mother about the gods, why he can't see them and why they didn't take care of his father when he fell ill with the sun fevers. His mother reassures him that his father lived a long life and that they'll see him again, someday. Soon after, 
she died saving him from a pair of dinosaur-like beasts. Years later, he has sons and daughters with his partner Ara but she perishes, while pregnant, in an earthquake. Most of his children are taken by the same illness as his father. With only one son left, Agar, Gore treks with him and his tribe away from their barren wasteland, seeking a more resourceful area of the planet. However, his son did not survive the journey. Gore loses all faith in the gods, committing blasphemous acts, such as burying his son underground, a practice forbidden by his culture, and saying there are no gods to take care of them. His tribe stoned him so that the gods couldn't hear his lies, saying he was of the black gods, and his crippled leg was a sign. While walking alone through the deserts, a pair of armored beings hurtle across the sky and land in an explosion on the ground nearby. Gore approaches these unknown beings to find the Gilded One had stabbed the inky black opponent. When the Gold God asks for help, Gore refuses, viewing the beings as gods and thus blaming them for his suffering. Just then, an ooze-like substance shot up into Gore's hand from the blade of the black armored god and formed into a spearhead, as if forged into volcanic glass. With it, he butchered the remaining god. With a mere thought, the spearhead turned once again into ooze, covering Gore's body in armor with wings. As he flew away from his planet and into outer space, he wondered if there were more gods out there to find. An ancient symbiote of power. The first symbiote, all black, is an ancient amorphous weapon originating from the evil Null. It left Null when he became incapacitated, and bonded itself to Gore who becomes imbued with its superhuman powers, including flight as well as increased strength and durability. From Gore's thoughts, he can mold the shape-shifting symbiote to form armor around his body and produce weapons, which are limited only by his thoughts. One of the weapons, All Black the Necrozwar, extends from his arms and is made from living darkness. The symbiote also provides him with the ability to regenerate. Familial bonds. Gore's only allies are that of his family. After he loses them all, he begins spouting blasphemy against the gods, resulting in his tribe turning against him. When the all black symbiote bonds to him, he creates an army of black berserkers, god like creatures with immense strength. They do his bidding and kill gods for him, which fuels his powers. Using the symbiote, he also creates constructs of his deceased wife's son. Gods are the one true enemy. Gore has had numerous encounters with Thor Odinson, aka Thor, over the centuries. One encounter in particular where he nearly lost his life teaches him that his dreams are still possible, that he has something to live for, which is to kill all the gods. He claims he has slain gods of jealousy, death, war, fear, chaos, poetry, and flowers. A History of Slaying Gods Gore spent the next thousands of years torturing and butchering gods and creating an army of black berserkers. When Gore attacked the god Kronix, he claimed the Pool of Forevers used it to travel through the time stream, arriving in various times. He went back to the start of the universe to slay one of the first Elder Gods and then far in the future to the desolate Earth 14412 where he enslaved all the Gods, except for all Father Thor, aka King Thor, whom he tormented for 900 years. Gore indentured the Gods to construct a device to kill anyone of divinity known as the Godbot. While describing his ancient symbiote weapon to his prisoner Volstag the Valiant, Lion of Asgard, one of many gods he enslaved and then imprisoned for stealing bread. Volstag accused him of being a god himself, a most foul and despicable one. Gore nailed him to a cross and as his young son, formed from the all-black symbiote, came looking for him, asking for food, Gore said that his son would not go hungry. The Thor of the Present, the Avenger from Earth 616, traveled to the end of time and joined the Thor of the Future. King Thor, to defeat the God Butcher. Meanwhile, the young Thor of the Viking Age escaped Gore's slavery. 
he attempted to kill the god bomb using a piece of a star, but it blew him off the planet where he met up with his future selves. King Thor struck Gore with his hammer sending him light years away, and for the first time, Gore felt afraid. To gain more power, he ordered his army of dark minions to kill all the gods he enslaved, which fueled his power and allowed him to defeat the three Thors. When Gore activated the god bomb, the symbiote construct of his wife called him out as a god. Angry at the accusation, he killed her. The construct of his son, Aegir, then allied with Thor the Avenger, to bring down his father who he saw had become the very thing he fought over a millennia to destroy. Thor the Avenger, with Agar's prayers and the remaining gods across time and space, absorbed the full might of the god bomb and Gore's Necrozor. Using the blast's power, Thor weakened Gore as Aegir called his father the god of hypocrisy. The younger Thor finally slayed Gore the god Butcher. Gore's mark though was left permanently on Thor the Avenger, his philosophy of selfish gods only out for themselves stuck with Thor, which led to him to become unworthy of Mjolnir. Gore's consciousness also survived inside the All Black. Gore was later resurrected by Loki Lawfacen, aka Loki, the new host to All Black. Gore reclaimed the All Black from him and impaled him in the back. He crucified Thor and Loki, and vowed to destroy Midgard and make Thor watch. He engulfed both brothers into the All Black, but shortly thereafter, gods who Thor previously saved were awakened by the Goddess of Thunder. These gods liberated Thor and Loki, and together they finally defeated Gore in the All Black symbiote. Without the symbiote, Gore became mortal and left without his memories. The Sky Lords of Indigar took him in so that he could live his life in peace. Korg. Native to the planet Rhea, the Cronins are a highly advanced race who developed space travel technology thousands of years ago, shortly after creating the Gravitron, a device installed upon all Cronin starships that enabled them to defy the laws of gravity. Having achieved space travel capability, the Cronins soon set out to conquer other worlds, using their giant Mechano-class and Mechanoid-class robot drones to subjugate less advanced civilizations. Approximately 5,000 years ago, the Cronins attempted an invasion of Earth. Landing in the city-state of Babylon in a region designated Mesopotamia, the Cronin invasion force was confronted by King Gilgamesh, ruler of the nearby city-state of Uruk. Gilgamesh, with the assistance of a time-traveling warrior from Earth's future named Captain America, forced the ill-prepared Cronins to retreat to their starship and leave Earth. After having millennia to contemplate the tactical errors made in their first Earth invasion, the Cronins staged another attempted invasion of the planet approximately 10 Earth years ago. Staging an attack from a secret base on Iapetus, a moon orbiting the nearby planet of Saturn, the Cronins landed a much larger invasion force in the nation of Norway on Earth's Scandinavian peninsula. The brothers Korg and Margus, still inexperienced young bricks at the time, were among the Cronins assembled for the attack. Anxious to conquer, the invasion force pursued a native bystander, Dr. Donald Blake, into a nearby cave where he uncovered Mjolnir, the Hammer of Thor, one of Earth's various thunder gods. Meanwhile, the Cronins proceeded to attack Earth's military forces, using their illusion-casting technology to scare them into retreat. Eventually Blake, who had been transformed into Thor by the Mjolnir's magic properties, confronted the Cronins and used his godly powers to defend against every attack the invaders initiated. Finally, the Cronins unleashed one of their Mechano-monster units against the god, but Thor destroyed it with one swing of Mjolnir. Badly beaten and terrified at Thor's power levels, the Cronin invasion force once again fled to their starships and retreated, only to learn much later that not all Earth natives possessed Thor's godly powers. In their hasty retreat, one of the Cronin starships crashed on an asteroid and became separated from the rest of the fleet. When Thor and a group of his fellow Earth gods happened upon the asteroid, the Cronins attacked in an attempt to steal the starship of the gods. Unable to match the power of the gods, 
the Cronins salvaged the Gravitron from their disabled vessel and modified it into a weapon to counter Thor. But Thor once again prevailed over the Cronins, destroying the vessel and setting off a chain reaction that destroyed the entire asteroid. Sometime during his travels, Korg and his brother Margus were captured by the Sakaar Empire and implanted with obedient slugs to ensure their loyalty. Korg was one of the survivors of the Maw Gladiator Training School, and was paired with the Hulk and several others in a gladiator team. In their first battle, the Hulk forced Korg to kill Margus, who had been driven insane. Korg was anguished, but got over his brother's death and eventually developed a friendship with the Hulk. Korg was freed by the Silver Surfer after fighting in the Imperial Arena in a bid for the Emperor's favor. Thor Women Played by Jane Foster After Thor Odinson was deemed no longer worthy of wielding Mjolnir, Jane Foster was telepathically drawn to the moon where Mjolnir lay in wait. Upon lifting the hammer, Jane underwent a physical transformation and took on the powers of Thor.